Good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching this. My name is Yomi, and welcome to New Life Church Online. My name is Ben. Again, I just welcome you wherever you are. 
Uh, wherever you are, just please like, comment, share. Yes. Uh, we want to get involved with how, what God's doing in your life, what God's doing while you're watching this, and we'll, uh, we'd love just to see what God's doing in your life. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yes, let's make this um, interactive. Let's make this a community. Um, whatever blesses you, please like, share, and comment. We're going to jump straight into worship now. So uh, I'm going to pray, but just uh, position yourself just to receive from God in this worship session. Uh, it's from when we had a time together, and it is just a, such a powerful time. So, yeah. Yeah, Father, we. We thank you that wherever we are, whatever we're going through, that you can come and impact our lives. Father, let us um, really feel the, your presence and your love uh, and really kind of invade deep into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. He calls you deeper, he calls me deeper. Am I a response in this moment? Am my response in this moment is to say, I just want, I just want, I just want you. I just want, I just want, I just want you. I just want, I just want, I just want you. I just want, I just want, I just want you. I just want, I just want, I just want you. I just want, I just want, I just want you. I just want, I just want, I just want you.
Jesus, we worship you. Father God, we appreciate you for who you are. We thank you for coming in our lives, for being with us. Without you, we're nothing. And so, Father, we lay our lives before you yet again, just in worship, in adoration, because you deserve it. Indeed, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. Mm -hmm. And Father, you do not desire anything from us save the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. And this morning, we just want to give you the fruit of our lips in thanksgiving <clears throat> for what you've done, for what you do, and for what you will do. Father, we appreciate you. We love you. Take all the glory, take all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. That was such an awesome time in, yeah. in, in worship. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, straight away, we're just going to be going into uh, a time of the word. And um, I'm looking forward to this. I'm excited about this, um, probably because of the subject. Uh, <laughs> and bringing, bringing the message to us today is um, a sister in church here. Um, <clears throat> She also heads up the uh, winter night yeah, bus, bus shelter, bus shelter. Uh, and also she works, she's a, she's a member of staff here at the New Life um, Church. Um, please, if you've got pens, if you've got notebooks, you want to take notes there because there's something to learn. But more importantly, I believe that this message would impact your life. Please welcome Donna. Donna, she, she, she takes the message. I'm talking to you today if you ever get angry. If you never ever feel anger, you never feel narked, you, you never feel a little bit frustrated with someone, then maybe this talk's not for you. You can go and get yourself a cup of coffee. But for the rest of us, I'm talking today about anger. The title of my message is, not angry, just happiness challenged. So why am I talking 
about anger. Well, I'm continuing our series entitled Wonder in the Wild, um, where we as a church are working our way through Exodus. Now, this is the second week that we have really sort of deep dived the, the characteristics of God as, um, as revealed at Mount Sinai to Moses. So in a minute, I'm going to read from Exodus 34. And um, I just want to put a bit of you know context around this. We are going to be looking in on a conversation between God and Moses. So let's get a bit of context here. So God has previously had a conversation with Moses. And in this conversation, Moses asked God the question. He says, show me your glory. And God says to him, you can't see the full extent of my glory. If you do, you will die. So the answer that God gives to Moses to the question, show me your glory, is not an appearance, which is probably what Moses was looking for. I don't know about you, but if I said to someone, show me your glory, I'd want to hear what they're like, but I'd want to see what they're like too. No, the answer that God gives to Moses of the question, show me your glory, is a description. He gives him a character, uh, his character attributes. He gives him a short theology lesson, if you like. God gives him 54 words in our English translation. So here's those 54 words that God says to Moses in answer to the question, show me your glory. He says, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and the fourth generation. Now, this is one of the most important Bible passages, this passages there is. We know this because in the entire scriptures, this is referred to lots and lots and lots of times later. Uh, Nehemiah pulls bits out of it. Jeremiah quotes this passage. David mentions this passage in two of his Psalms. Joel and Jonah, we hear, knew this passage off by heart. So Bible authors recognised that this was a foundational statement about God. Because get this, it's the only place in the whole Bible that God talks about himself. So God starts by saying, he says, the Lord, the Lord. The original translation to this is Yahweh, Yahweh, I am God. So that's who I am. And then he says, I am compassionate. And he says, I am gracious. And he says, I am slow to anger. The literal translation of that one is long-nosed. So here we have the God of the universe and he is saying, I am God. I am gracious. I am compassionate. I've got a long nose. Now I think we've got to bottom that one out. Why is God saying of himself, I am long-nosed? So here goes, I'm going to try and explain this one to you. So when you get angry, what happens to you? What happens to the colour of your face? Quite often you go red in the face, you go red in the neck, you may even go red in the shoulders. And the very last part of your face that will go red is your nose. You probably haven't even noticed that. So what God is saying here, it takes long, long time for my nose to go red. I have a long nose. So the word literally means long nose. It's as if God takes a deep breath and he deals with sin and he says, I am slow to anger. I am slow for my nose to burn hot. Like every line in the Bible, this is intentional. It's not a throwaway comment here. Now, I am slow to anger. I believe God has put this in the Bible because he wants us to look at this. He wants to look at what anger really is. He wants us to look at good anger, anger that is used in the right way. And he wants us to look at wrong anger. Now, this is a biggie, and I think that many of us have anger in our lives, and those around us that are, you know, passengers in our life, if you like, they may not even know that we are angry people on the inside. So I have slit, uh, split this into two, uh, this slow to anger comment into two parts within my talk today. I want to talk about it from the Bible perspective, but I want to talk about what it means for us today. What does it mean for us? I am slow to anger. So when God describes himself here to Moses, he's saying, I'm slow to anger. 
I do get angry, but it takes me a long time to get there. Now, I've got a question for you here. When do you think is the first time in the Bible that we hear that God gets angry? Think about it. When do you think you would first hear in the Bible, God got angry? Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, it had to be in Genesis. It had to be at the fall. He had to have said, I'm angry with Adam. I'm angry with Eve. Maybe it was in the flood. He had to be angry. He sent the rains. He only saved one family. Maybe he was angry at Joseph's brothers. Yet none of these places in the Bible does it specifically say, and God was angry. Even when he destroyed the earth with the flood. Now the, the, the language here is very, is very um, interesting. In Genesis 6, 6, it says, and the Lord was sorry that he made man on earth and it grieved his heart. Now he's not saying, depends what emphasis, what slant you put on this. He's not saying, I'm sorry that I ever made the earth. They're grieving my heart. Now, I think he's saying he's so sorry that he's having to enact his justice, that he's having to um, do what he doesn't want to do. I think he's saying he's sorry. He was hurting. He wasn't angry. So when was the first time that we specifically hear in the word of God that he was angry? The first time was at the burning bush. The first time was after five times of speaking to Moses and saying to Moses, you're my guy. I want you to be the one that leads them. I want you. I have a purpose for you. And five times God saying, no, 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 I'm not your man. I'm not the person that you want to do this. Exodus 4.12, God says this. I will be with you when you speak. Moses said, please just send anyone else. And then verse 14. And then the Lord became angry with Moses. This is the first time God is recorded as being angry in the Bible. His nose burned red because five times he speaks identity over Moses and five times Moses rejects his identity. And in this first case of anger, does God strike Moses down dead? No, no, no. Even when he's angry with Moses, his nose is burning red. His, mo his nose is burning hot. What does he say? He says, okay, what about your brother, the Levite? I'll send him with you. He speaks well. In God's anger, he made a, cover, he made a concession to cover Moses' inability to see his identity. And then we see his other characteristics of compassion and grace. Let's look at Jesus. Now, even he got angry. Matthew 21 shows a time when Jesus went to the Passover. Jesus was entering into Jerusalem and then he walked into the temple. And what did he see? He saw something that broke his heart and it made him righteously anger. This is Jesus that never sinned. He saw greed. He saw hypocrisy. He saw misuse of his father's name and his fa father's house. So what did he do? Jesus physically turned over tables. Matthew 12 says Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. This is Jesus who never sinned and he threw the tables over. Do you know, it would have been so much easier when I was writing this, when I thought to myself, it would be so much easier if I, I didn't have to say that Jesus physically lost his temper. But my opinion is, and it's just my opinion, that we had to see an illustration of righteous anger. It would not have been enough for us to have read the words, Jesus was slightly knocked at this. Jesus was a little bit peeved that this situation happened. No, we had to see righteous anger. And in this, and, and Jesus got reasons, uh, angry for the reasons of greed, hypocrisy, abuse of his father's name, his father's house. Even Jesus, who was perfect, got righteously anger, angry. You see, the very characteristics of anger and the reason anger is put inside of us, because you have anger inside of you, I have anger inside of me. We, we have it inside us. It's this idea that protect, protects the truth of God, that allows you to stand up for people that are being downtrodden. Uh, we see uh, child trafficking. Uh, I don't know if you watched the COP26 uh, climate change summit meeting. Um, there was so much there that made you angry about what people are doing to our world. When we see 
things, those that can't stand up for themselves, when you see lies in our society, when we see truth twisted, that was when we feel righteously angry and you feel passion. And that passion inside you, that moment is what makes you stand up when no one else will stand up and you say, I want to do this. I see wrong. I want to do this for God. But here's the problem. I know when I'm burning for something that is righteous. But sometimes I burn for the wrong stuff. Sometimes I get angry for stuff that I have no right to get angry at. Sometimes I get mad at my kids. Sometimes I get mad in my, at people in my life. Sometimes I get mad at objects in my life. Sometimes I get mad at stuff and not one of those things has to do with righteous anger. They have to do with my self-righteousness. They have to do with how highly I value my opinions. They have to do with the fact how I think my way is better than your way. They have to do with the fact that I think that my time is more important than your time. They have to do with the fact that if you let me down, you have betrayed me. They have to do with the fact that I think I'm doing the right thing. And if you mess with my plans and my ideas, you're messing with me. We had a new volunteer join us at our community club where uh, we, we welcome the vulnerable and the homeless of Milton Keynes. And I was showing this new volunteer around. And every time I told him how we do things our way, he would stop me and he'd, show me, he'd talk to me and he'd tell me a better way. I could feel myself getting really angry. How dare this guy who's never been in this place before come into my club. Of course, it's God's club, but at that time in my head, it was my club. How dare he come in? And he tell me how things should be. I felt like it was a personal attack on me and the way I had designated that the club would be. The reality is these things are not standing up for righteousness. These are things that I've decided to put in my life as little mini idols. Because if I truly walked in love towards others, that love, that love would cover the inadequacy that others constantly will have. People will fail you. Your boss will fail you. Your partner will fail you. Your friends, your family, anyone, <laughs> things fail you. But if you're like me and you view failure as, as an attack or a betrayal on who you are, then the result is you will be angry because you feel you are being unrighteously persecuted. And of course, that's not true. Do you ha ever have these um, mini conversations in your head with the person that's upset you? And you, and you talk it through and, you, and you, you imagine what you would have said and what you should have said. And in these arguments, I don't know about you, but I always win and they always look really stupid. Anger is a complex emotion. And maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, I do not remember the last time I lost my temper. I do not remember the last time that I raised my voice. But of course, that's not the only way that anger is, uh, comes from us. Um, you may meet, not be someone who explodes when they get angry. Maybe you're someone who shuts down. Maybe you're someone who withdraws. Maybe you withhold love and affection. You've hurt me. I don't want you near me. Maybe you move away. Maybe you get angry tears. Maybe you protect yourself. But these are all forms of anger, just not the normal form that you think anger comes in. Of course, there are different types of anger and dependent on where you are in how you receive the anger, then you are gonna view it differently. I remember when I was a teenager, I used to go skating every Friday night. And one Friday night, a girl that I knew who I considered a friend said to me, come and chat to me outside. It was a trap. I got outside and I got badly beaten in. And um, I went home to my sister and I said to my sister and my friends, well, I've been beaten in. And they could tell that because um, I was quite bruised. It was quite, a, they'd done a good job on me. And um, my sister was really, really angry. And my sister is not the sort of person that you mess with. I told her I was going to say that and she was quite happy for me to say that. And um, my friends and my sister, they, they made me go back the next Friday night and they went and chatted to these girls and these, these girls found out in no uncertain terms that um, they shouldn't mess with me. So in this case, I was pleased that my sister got angry because she got angry. I could carry on going skating, which I love, still do. And these girls were put in their place. 
Dependent on where you are in the anger is how you will view anger itself. There is, of course, another form of anger. Anger in the form of abuse, intimidating, abusing, bullying. Two different types of anger. Anger as a form of protection, anger as a form of abuse. So I suppose, dependent on how you view anger is how you view the sentence, God is slow to anger. If you have a healthy view of anger, that someone is protecting you, then you will feel that God is just. If you have been on the receiving end of anger, then you may view, view anger as a toxic emotion. If you are the person with anger, you may view anger as just part of my DNA. It's just who I am. It's just the way I've grown up. The enemy would love you to believe there is nothing you can do about it. That anger is just part of you. Anger is just something you've grown up with and it's what, it's what you do. Let me give you an example of mine. Now, a friend of mine, um, she wouldn't consider herself to be an angry person. I wouldn't consider herself, her to be an angry person. But her kids said to her, every time you get angry, you make this noise in, the, in your throat. She says, I don't. They said, you do. She says, I don't. She said, go on, then tell me, what's it like? And they went, Ugh. As soon as she heard that noise, she realised that that was the noise that her dad always made every time he went for her. If she heard that noise, that she knew, run away, hide in the toilets because he was going to hurt her. And then when he'd done it, he would always say the same things. I'm so sorry, but you know what I'm like. Why would you get me so angry that I have to do these things? It's just part of me. It's part of my DNA. And unwittingly, it had also become part of my friends. Anger is a character trait that she doesn't like her, about herself. Now, we all have character traits that we, we don't particularly like. God says his character traits are compassion and grace and slow to anger. Now, it doesn't mean when the kids get, get, him, get him annoyed or, or when a colleague upsets him or someone pulls out on him in traffic. No, because that kind of anger is a sin. A character trait that holds us back, it takes our peace, it changes our destiny. How many times in anger have you done something that has completely changed the course of your life? I don't know, handed your notice in, finished a relationship. Of course, like all bad character traits, anger has its payoffs. And what I mean by that is getting angry, it feels good. When you're in the moment of anger, you enjoy that feeling he annoyed me, so I gave him a piece of my mind. Anger helps me to stay on my A game. When I'm angry, no one messes with me. I get what I want. I get results. I don't get complacent when I'm angry. Of course, when we get angry, in reality, we are churned up. People avoid us. We get things out of perspective. How many times have you been so angry at someone or a situation that all you can focus on is that thing? And somewhere over there is God, but you have all of your emotions and your feelings just angry at this thing. You get everything out of perspective. You miss what God has prepared for you. I just want to go through a few practical ways that we can deal with anger. God knew that in our humanness we would experience anger. So he he gave us he gave us his he gave us his book and he gave us in this book so many ways of addressing anger management. And I'm not going to go through this today. I'm not going to go through all of the ways, but um, I'll leave you to research them because each um, each of the ways that is mentioned in the Bible will um, it will be a different for you where you are in with anger. Sometimes we just need to go into scripture and we need to stay in there until we are free from the thing that is holding us back. We need to recognize that anger doesn't fix things. Love does, God does. Next time you're starting to feel angry, why don't you notice what it is that triggers you? It may be something like my friend from her past that is just there that you don't even know has happened. You need to pray and ask God what to do regarding the source of anger. I think the first step to recognising we have unrighteous anger is to recognise it in ourselves. If we internalise and we bury anger without dealing with the root cause, bitterness festers and our hearts will harden. 
Unfortunately, it's too often stuff that has happened to us in our past and throughout our life, maybe while growing up, that will become stuff that we act out on others. We see it all the time at a community club. Hurt people hurt people. Like my friend who wasn't even aware that she was emulating her father. Now, I know today we're talking about anger, but if there is stuff in your life that is holding you back, it may be time to ask God for the root and ask him to help in changing that. Once we recognize it in ourselves and we learn our triggers and, and I pray and pray, and I mean pray specific prayers. Don't say, you know, God, I, you know, I, I don't want to be angry anymore, help me. That's a good prayer, of course. But you know, if you're going into a situation where you know you are typically getting angry, I've got a meeting today, God, and in that meeting, so-and-so's in that meeting. When I'm in that meeting, sometimes I feel angry. I don't know what it is. Help me to understand what triggers it in me what that person triggers that anger in me. Change me, Father. Help me, Father. Heal me from within. God cares about every area of your life and he wants you healed, not constantly fighting your own internal and external battles. If it concerns you and you know it is a problem, you can invite him in and ask him to help you. Say to God, I want to be like you. And if you're slow to anger, then I want to be slow to anger. If it makes you angry, I want to be angry too. If it breaks your heart, if it grieves you, then I want to be grieved too. I want to let go of hurt. I want to let go of the defense mechanism I use of anger, unrighteous anger. So I'm finishing now. In Exodus 34, God says, I'm slow to anger. When Jesus came to earth in the form of man, we saw an example of righteous anger. He got angry when he saw man's greed and man's hypocrisy and God's character was attacked. Jesus wasn't angry about what happened to him. When the, you would have felt that he would have been at his most angry on the cross, his words were, it is finished, not I'm angry with these people. Jesus became angry for the right reasons but he was never malicious. He was never hurtful or hateful about it. God's anger is enacted when righteousness is broken. All too often we get angry at the wrong stuff. When people mess with us, when people hurt us, we can of course live with the character trait and just say, this is what it's like. I've grown up with this, this is part of my DNA, but we can change it. And I've talked of ways today that, we can, that can help us. We can pray specific prayers. We can delve into the, the Bible. We can look for the root of our anger and ask God to heal us internally. Hurt people, hurt people. And we don't want to be one of those hurt people anymore. Now I just want to just quickly pray and then I'm going to finish. Father God, I pray for breakthrough and I pray for freedom for unrighteous anger in our lives. I pray that you will help me to walk into the characteristics of compassion and grace and slow to anger. You know the internal and external battles that everyone is facing in their lives, Father. And I pray, Father, that you will heal us from within. Holy Spirit, I invite you in now. And I pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Yeah, thank you so much, Donna. It's such mm. a powerful message and such so much to uh, take home uh, for us. If anything resonated with you, anything that uh, you want to ask questions about, please just uh, get in touch via our website. There's a link in the description and there'll be someone pleased to come and, and help you and, and lead with you uh, through that. Um, but that is all from us now. So yeah. we'll say bye and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.